Hello, my friends. It's finally time. Great, great, great start. I would say most of you are probably already familiar with my son, Thursday Plurbin and Boy Porridge. Well, for those of you who don't follow me on other social media, this is my daughter. Her name is Gluten-Free Garbadine Girl Gruel. We've already had her for some time, if you can't tell. The only real modification on here, though, is her third eye. The rest can all be removed, which it will have to be today, considering that step one of the longification procedure is, um, removing her from her mortal flesh. I am ready to perform the surgery. But before we get into it, I need to tell you about this video sponsor, Hunt a Killer. Oh, you can hear it. What's in there? Mysteries. Because Hunt a Killer is a murder mystery subscription box. With each delivery, you'll sift through piles of documents, evidence, even audio recordings, case files. You'll get to decode ciphers, examine clues, and solve puzzles until you crack the case and catch the killer. It's a super unique game. I've never heard of anything like it before. I feel like all of us must have watched or read true crime and ended up wondering whether we would be able to put those clues together too. At least I definitely have. I think that was the coolest part about Hunt a Killer for me is that I finally got to be the detective as if I was in a book or a movie. Play it with your family and roommates yell about murder together, confuse the heck out of your neighbors. It's even a great option under activities you can do remotely over Zoom or Discord or whatever platform it is you use in these trying times with your friends. All of the materials they send you look so good. Everything is such good quality and there's clearly so much effort put into it. It's just so cool. I've never seen anything like it before. And right now you can go to huntakiller.com slash strangeons and use code strangeons to get 20% off your first box. That is code strangeons to get 20% off. My computer is over there, so I'm probably gonna be looking over there a lot. I have found this very helpful Tumblr post on how to skin a 1998 Furby, which is what she is. She's as old as I am. There is a limited supply of older Furbies in the world. They still make them, but they're just, they're not the same. They're, they're, they're not, they're never gonna be the same. So there is actually a limited supply of old Furbies out there and they're getting very expensive on eBay and stuff. I've noticed the Furby community coming up with all kinds of innovative new solutions, 3D printing the face plates and stuff like that. The community is kind of transcending beyond the need for like starting with an original 1998 Furby um, and I think that's really cool and I probably would have looked into going that route if I had not already bought her before I found out about that. I regret nothing. Not even spending 50 whole Canadian dollars on this little bitch. Anyway, how to skin a 1998 Furby. Before you start, you will need a couple of tools. Get a pair of wire cutters, a seam ripper, a craft knife, and a pair of needle nose pliers. I will be substituting kitchen scissors, these, and um, these are like shitty little jewelry pliers, but I, they'll be fine, right? That's it. I've already kind of like fucked around and tried to figure out if it was the skinning process was intuitive. It's not really. So I've already kind of like fucked up the first couple steps of this and exposed the zip tie type of thing in there. Thank you for the helpful diagram of what not to cut, which I totally cut. Okay, so we gotta snip the cable tie. I can snip it. A. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I see already where this is going. <laughs> Are you ready to see her innards? Oh, this is undignified. Free the ears. Hey, there we go. Okay, I feel like an expert. <laughs> so that's the what the ears look like, I guess. Ears are removed. She's looking even more destroyed. I've never had to do this this before because Thursday is not made of a like the mechanical 1998 Furbies that you usually think of when you think of Furbies. He's made of a Furby buddy. We followed the example of the person who created the original long Furby and used a Furby buddy because it's much easier to dissect because there's no mechanical parts to <coughs> Demons crawling in my throat. And like you can even see he's a little bit dressed up right now, but the Furby buddies in the original Furbies like in their faces like he doesn't have like his eyes are kind of just eternally staring into the void which is a look in itself but there's just something fun about you know unhook the ear bases how do you do that got him the ears are free i grab the faceplate from the bottom and use and lever it up peeling the glue away as i go some of the glue may hold on but you can cut through it with your craft knife <laughs> thank god i have one of those She's peeking. She's peeking free. Oh, I... She is reborn. <laughs> well, <laughs> my beautiful daughter. I'm so proud of her. I'm gonna peel this off because I don't, this probably won't get in my way, but it just feels like I should, you know? You've done it. Wow, thank you. I've done it. Oh, Thursday, no. 
Hello? Skin furbies do not look nearly as bad as I thought they would. I mean, I have, there is more to do. I'm gonna take this plastic off. Like She's gonna onion. look worse, I think, once I get the plastic off. She has layers. Yes, like an onion. Okay, so I'm not following any tutorial for this part. I just think, it, I guess it's sh it should be intuitive. You just unscrew it and then the plastic will come off. Um, oh shit. Oh shit, it's working, I think. So after using some truly questionable things as screwdrivers, just don't, don't even worry about it. Just don't, don't, it's fine. Just forget, you didn't see shit. I did not have a screwdriver small enough to take out some of these screws. So, but I was really curious to expose the innards. So I kind of just started cutting at the plastic. Would you like to come see her? Nobody wants to say hello, so I'm gonna go. Oh my! So now we're going to attempt to remove the paste so that we can stick it on her longified form. You know, I could look up a tutorial at this point, probably, but am I gonna? No. That's no fun at all. Now we've gotten to this screw, which I assume is important for the faceplate. Oh baby, look at me go. I finally guessed how to do something correctly. Ah! Didn't expect it to be so, like, you know? You see? There it is. The remains. Hello. <laughs> okay, so I realized a few things since my dissection. I had decided to keep this piece right here because it, like, holds the holds the back of the mouth in a way that it's not like flopping around all crazy. As for the eyes, you have to glue this white piece down to the black part so that the, well, I haven't done it, or I did it, but the glue it didn't really work. So her eyes still go all the way around, but <laughs> if you glue this white piece down, her the eyes will stay in place and then the eyelids still work. So that is also on the to-do list. However, what I'm working on right now is I am going to take apart the Furby head skin. Taking this part into a few different pieces, tracing them onto here so they have a pattern, and then re-sewing her from the... this. Keen hands opened the Beans Museum as a pop-up. Oh, it's only a pop-up. The faceplate is like half sewed in. Also, I need like a round like piece for the very top. It's not really going in any particular order it's just whatever i feel like doing and you know it's gonna i have faith that it's going to come together eventually <laughs> Nail it. my daughter is a be beautiful young woman there we go good morning gamers it's the day three of longification i've been sewing on her face again this morning. The faceplate has little holes in the side. Focus, focus on her, not on me. She's the real star. I'm sewing through the little face, back through the little faceplate holes because I feel like glue would not feel stable enough. I would not feel safe with that. So I'm painstakingly re-sewing the faceplate back in. She looks like she's just sleeping, slumbering beautifully. Her eyes are still flopping around in every direction, but. Oh, look, look, she's like a weird puppet. We have the girl of Gruel. We got her ears. I gotta figure out how to attach these things now, so that's gonna be fun. What? Can you see the pain in my eyes at realizing that I have to sew more tiny little things? Yes. Well, it's pain. Every time you cut the fabric, you shed like 10 pounds of hair. For now, I think I'm just gonna sew. Yeah this together, keep the inside pink of the ears. So I glued the face down, finally. This this is not a tutorial, please do not do any of this in the order that I did it. I cut the fabric out for Sarah to sew with her actual functioning sewing machine. Yes, the game has really been stepped up since Thursday's longification surgery. Remember, remember that? Remember that time we hand sewed for like 12 hours? I got hair all over everything I have ever owned and will ever own. I got hair all over my human essence itself. I think I even found one in my sandwich, that was fun. Can I help you? I got an ear. She's got one. One beautiful ear. One ear. 
I existed on my floor like a goblin for many hours that day, but the girl was coming along beautifully. Are you getting me while I'm getting her? Rude. I have a job today. It's just... <laughs> she became queen of the fruit, and then she became a tube. We could already tell she was going to be significantly chunkier than her brother. Hi. My real name is Stranger Jones, and I lied about being done making my Furby yesterday. She's really fun in this form, honestly. I love the little sock puppet. Also, I thought of something horrible. Wait. She's done! It's a little tour of um, my materials right now. So we've got the girl of Gruel on my handy dandy Ikea crate. Um, this is her spine. So the blue spine and the white spine are two different brands. They're the same size spine, but just for some reason, because I bought them from different places, they're from different brands. The blue spine, I think, was like, like some kind of a hose, but it was really cheap and it was clearly similar enough to whatever the hell we've been using as Furby spines. So I bought it and I got like an insane amount of it and I was like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to use for her creepy little arms, but we'll get to those. But my spine pliers would not work to connect the white and the blue spines, hoses, whatever the hell they are. So what I did was I broke, I took like those take, those like wooden takeout chopsticks and I broke them into like smallish pieces and then put them in there for more structure and then put a little Gorilla Glue around the chopstick and then put tape around all of that. And it's resulted in something that is good and strong and I'm happy with it. As for the one in the middle that's connecting the white spines, that was because these, the use of two of these connector pieces at once kind of make it so that it, it lines up the wrong ends of the white spine so they can't be connected. It makes them go like this. Like those two pieces can't, they don't want to, you know. That's what we've got going on with her spine. We've got her skin, which you saw yesterday but I added her little feet and this bottom flap that will be sewn shut once the spine and the stuffing is in there. And then we have her arms. These I'm incredibly excited for. These are just those like posable, like wooden artist's hands that I painted black. As for like the, the arm flesh, I don't really have any solutions to that right now. I'm pro she's probably just gonna have exposed spine arms for now. Maybe at some point I'll sew her some sleeves, but I don't know if that's in the cards for today. We're gonna find out. We're gonna, I'm probably gonna have to take another day if I wanna give her any arm flesh. That's where we're at. She's taking a nap on me over here. Hello darkness, my old friend. So I measured out where the armholes needed to go, gave him a little snip, and shoved her spine right in there. She had a severed spine where her head should be, and what looked like creepy little insect arms, and honestly, it was kind of a look. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, this is a good, this, I like this part. Okay, so I think the process is going to go. I'm gonna stuff most of her body. I'm gonna sew up her ass, and then, <laughs> and then, I'm going to probably put her head on. I need to give her a heart. I don't have any like scrap fabric, never mind pink or red scrap fabric, so I've come up with a pretty horrible solution for that one. Something I do remember from Making Thursday was that you kind of have to try and keep the spine in like the center of the stuffing so that she doesn't get weird, but if there's anything we've learned from Thursday is they're gonna get weird over time anyway. It's very... It's very warm inside here. She has gained an ass. Honestly, she's very soft. I'm feeling very comforted right now. I'll probably feel less comforted when she has tiny little hands, but right now, very comforting. I've tried to um, glue a worm onto the wire heart to the best of my ability, but that does not appear to be working. It's kind of just falling off. Also, I realized that if we hug her, the wire is probably just gonna fall off. So yeah, I'm like uh, too lazy to set up two cameras this time. So my glue just fell down. I'm a mess, okay. So I don't think that that is the solution for us. I think I might just honestly be really lazy and just tie the worm. It's more of a worm pretzel, but it's heart adjacent. She kind of looks like she has a pretzel for a heart. I know, yeah, that's, that's what I said too. So I pretty much just have to sew it on and then she's gonna be like 90% done unless I decide to give her better arms. I'm gonna sit on the floor 
and listen to the Gideon the Ninth audiobook. Yeah, I did just read it a month ago, and now I'm listening to the audiobook again. What do you want from me? No, this video is not sponsored by Audible. It's sponsored by Tia's Hyperfixations. I noticed that putting stuffing directly behind her faceplate stopped the eyes and the mouth from working. So I found this takeout container. I just cut it and stuck it in there behind the faceplate, and that solved the problem. And then she was totally almost done, and we didn't overcomplicate it anymore at all. It looks like she's wearing a furry jacket. It's not my original vision of like creepy spidery arms, but it looks better. She looks more huggable, more fashionable. She looks more approachable, which is not really what you want with a Furby, but I think it looks better. It looks more finished than just the um, spine arms. Buff. Yeah, she looks weirdly jacked. My daughter, gluten-free. Garbadine, girl gruel, was born on March 19th, 2020. With all of her arms completed, our final task was, of course, to terrorize the town. In keeping with our celebration of Thursday's birth, I thought that this should involve christening her at the nearest government building, which in this case was Toronto City Hall. I encountered a problem, a hindrance to my artistic vision, you might say. This balcony was still closed for the winter, so I might possibly, perhaps, have taken advantage of the fact that my platform boots gave me the ideal leg length extensions necessary to step over the fence, closing it off. Ah! I am escorted out of the Furby christening by Nathan Phillips Square security. I got caught by security! How did you? They came up to me as I was on my way out, climbing back over the fence. It was very dignified, I assure you. The first thing one of them said to me was, uh, Excuse me, but what the hell is that thing? Is that a Furby? And I said, yes, sir, this is my Furby. I just I really wanted to do the Lion King thing off City Hall balcony with my Furby, you must understand. I might have gotten away due to the sheer absurdity of my crime. Now that my daughter had tasted a life of crime on only her second day in this world, it was time to wind down with a little family picnic. So here she is, gorgeous, effervescent, transcendent. I hope you liked coming along on this journey with me. I hope you see Girl Gruel and her tiny little hands in your dreams tonight. And as always, thank you so much for watching.